Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creature series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Prince Phantom, a.k.a. Cameron. And uh, today we're going to be ranking all the Barbarian subclasses. So, um, yeah, yeah, Barbarian. Uh, you guys have recently, you and Sam recently finished up um, reviewing each of these subclasses. Uh, I say recently. You've done Monk since then. But it is fairly recent. Yeah, uh, so you're well acquainted recent. with, you're well acquainted with the Some good and the mostly mostly bad of this barbarian yeah. um yeah so mostly bad yeah all right hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get into uh, that. have a little bit uh smoother of a ride than we had with our artificer video uh let's find out on with the rankings All right, here we are. Um, is there anything you want to start off saying about barbarians before we begin? Well, the barbarian class as a whole knows what it wants, right? It wants to hit stuff hard, and it wants to be hit hard. Yeah, these are simple uh, people. Yeah, uh, it's not fooling anybody, and neither are its subclasses. Most of the features try and interact with one of those two things. Um, how well they succeed at that, eh, we'll talk about that. Uh, you're not going to find much utility in any of these. No, no. There's uh, a little bit with like Storm Herald, maybe, but not not yeah, a lot. We'll get into it. We'll yeah. get into it. All right, we're going alphabetical um, again. Yeah. So, um, what well, what does that have us as Berserker first, or no Ancestral Guardian? Oh, there's one that starts with A. Yes. Duh. Uh, I actually okay. I have to talk about this. When you and Sam went over the Ancestral Guardian, you had very harsh things to say about it. Uh, I can't pull up my any other screen right now, so I can't look at the nuances of each subclass. But uh, yeah, because I'm, I've got to keep this on the screen. Um, but yeah, what I mainly remember is that like your ancestors suck and they help everybody else except you. Yeah, so... Let's talk about it. Let me refresh your memory. So okay. uh, once per turn, when you hit somebody, the main feature of the subclass is that you can curse them, basically. And if they try and attack somebody other than you, uh, they have disadvantage in all their attacks. And if they do manage to hit, then that creature that they hit has resistance to the damage. Yeah, that felt like a a bad thing. But now you mention it and you, you open this video up by saying... They want to hit hard and they want to be hit. Yes, your 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 purpose in a party is to soak up some damage. So that I can see that being an yeah. Advantage. So so the ancestral guardian is the tank subclass, yes. right? It has a taunt built in that you can use every turn. Um, only one creature per turn, but every turn, um, and you can. It has other features that stack on top of that that also try and help it tank. Uh, I believe at 6th level it gets the ability to reduce some damage. Um, get some utility spells at 10th level that aren't good. Uh, and then it's 14th level ability deals some retaliatory damage occasionally. It, it's not that great, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say that about most of these Barbarian subclasses. I actually think uh, I've changed my opinion on this I, slightly. I used to think Ancestral Guardian was the best Barbarian. I think it's the second best now. Whoa. Um, uh, we'll get into what I think is the best here in a here in a bit, yeah, yeah, but uh, I think the ancestral guardian makes it to be C tier, probably C tier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's probably really good for barbarian, though. It is, and you'll see that it's not going to get much better. Um, no. The reason ancestral guardian gets up this high is because you can play it in a way that's very unconventional and is actually much better than playing its standard Barbarian playstyle. This playstyle is actually what elevates it to C tier. And it's by playing a ranged Barbarian. Okay. So you can apply this taunt debuff on any attack role. It doesn't have to be a melee attack. Um, and so in doing this, you can take a longbow or something hit somebody from distance, now they have disadvantage to hit anybody except for you, but and you're, you're 100 feet away. away. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, now, neat. that being said, you're you're sacrificing some damage. You don't get to add your rage damage to ranged attacks. So you're really leaning into the you know, tank play style here. Your support. You're taking the meanest looking guy on the field and saying, you're going to do half damage to everyone. Whatever you do, it's not going to hurt us near as much as it should. You don't have to do that every time, though. No, no, you don't have to. And you can mix it up a bit if you want. But yeah. if you want to devote yourself to the ranged play style, you can even take sharpshooter and you can still do decent damage. Um, and what I would generally recommend if you're doing this, take five levels of Barbarian to get your extra attack, but probably multi-class into Fighter uh, or a different class. Um, and that'll get you things like the Archery Fighting Style to give you better accuracy, things like that. Action Surge. So you can... It, it, it plays well with multi-classing. Do you think this feature is worth taking five levels in Barbarian if you're just going to multi-class out of it? I mean, I think it can be. If you want to play a Barbarian fighter multi-class especially, I definitely think it can be worth it. Um, but why do you want, want to play a Barbarian if you're not even going to... if the Rage feature isn't going to help point. you at all? That's a fair point. And the Rage feature is still helping you. You're still taking half damage from stuff. Yeah, alright, that's true. So you're still using the Rage feature. Yeah. Um, you're just not getting... A, and I understand. I totally get it. This isn't what most pe people roll up a barbarian for. No, I'm I'm just taking the subclass at its strongest potential playstyle. That's what's elevating it up this far. See, the thing is, if I play this barbarian straight, mm. your you and Sam's analysis of it kind of almost feeling like you're, like you're playing a subclassless barbarian is accurate <laughs> because it's not doing anything for you, is it? No, I mean, yeah, generally, if I have a barbarian swinging an axe in my face, like, I'm not going to pay as much attention to other people on the board. Right. Yeah, so if you play it straight, uh, I would put this in F tier. Simple oh. as that. Um, and it's this, it's this kind of gimmicky play style that elevates it to C. Okay. Yeah. I'm harsh, totally I'm sorry. Good. You're going to find... No, no, it's fine. I mean... It's, it... We were not kind to most of these barbarian subclasses. Uh, that but, trend is going to continue. Yeah, let's uh, let's see where it goes from here. Um, now you guessed berserker first, but there are still two more before that. We have battle. Yeah, Rager. I realized that. I realized <laughs> that as I said it. <laughs> so, so battle, right, battle rager. That's the that's the dwarf one, right? Yeah, yeah. Originally printed in the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, famously home to many terrible things, and also the Blade Singer somehow. Um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it, this does have a dwarf only restriction. I have literally never heard of any DMs who have abided by that restriction. Well, so no, you can they, ignore that. No, I mean it says right there in the text you can ignore it. Yeah. So well, uh, I don't even know why they bothered. Yeah, I'm not even going to factor that into this ranking at all. It doesn't but matter. I, I am curious though, like why why put a restriction? Did they think this was so good that? Uh, well, it needed to be it was dialed for flavor. back a little. Yeah, it was for flavor because uh, uh, originally uh. the Blade Singer was restricted to only elves. Yeah. So um, they kind of had a, I say a theme. It was only two subclasses, so I guess you can't really call that a theme. But they had an idea for subclasses being restricted to race. Yeah. Um, they obviously didn't stick with that, and for good reason. Um, uh. So. What about the Battle Rager is good? What about it is bad? Well, you're forced to wear crappy medium armor that's worse than half plate. And, and even you do a worse, worse AC than half plate. Even worse, that could be taken away from you and you have no features. Yeah. Um, almost none anyway. Um, you do get, though, a bonus action attack that doesn't make you exhausted. We'll get into that later. Yeah. Um, you do get... Uh, the ability to dash as a bonus action, which is genuinely good. And my favorite feature of all is that every time you use Reckless Attack, you get, I believe, five temporary hit points. Okay. So uh, you may remember if people have watched our uh, Artificer video, we talked about how the uh, Artillerist can constantly refresh temporary hit points and yes. the power of that. Now, the yeah. Artillerist, granted, is doing it to your entire party. Right. The Battle Rager is just itself. That's it. Uh, but it does allow you to constantly refresh those temporary hit points. And as a barbarian, 
you are taking half damage from most things. So in reality, it's closer to 10 temporary hit points every turn. Yeah. Which is actually kind of good. No, like, I can the see battle value ranger... in that. You're the one that wants to take the biggest beating, so... Yeah, yeah, the Battle Ranger is often maligned as a terrible, terrible subclass. My opinion on it has risen over the years. It's still not good, to be <laughs> clear. It's its capstone is laughable. Genuinely. Three for... damage whenever yeah, somebody yeah, hits right, you. That's right. That is mind bogglingly oh. bad. But it's as a low level, like if you're playing to like level eight or something and you want to play a barbarian and you want to mix it up a little, you want to do something different. I think it's a fine choice in comparison to its competition. I would put it in the lowest D tier possible. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that sounds that sounds fair, because uh yeah, we don't wanna we gotta save some room in the Fs. Yeah, I I don't wanna talk it up too much. It's still bad. Yeah. But in comparison to some of its competition, it's it's not the worst. All right. Uh, now, what do you think? Does, does Beast rank any higher? Now, Beast is an F tier. And this is going to be yeah. the most controversial <laughs> take. I This is going to be the most controversial take that I make this entire video. Beast, I think, is very close to Berserker and how bad it is. Wow. That is controversial. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm interested so, in your argument here. So, what does the beast give you? It gives you natural weapons yes. that are worse than regular weapons. Okay. It gives you a climbing speed and some jumping and some swimming speed when you want it. Uh, and now we're at tenth level, and it hasn't given me a feature that I'm happy with. Okay. At tenth level, it's given me. Uh, let me refresh my memory. Um, oh yeah, in 10th level, you have to use your natural weapons for your 10th level feature to function. What is that feature? Meaning you have... Uh, it's uh, the one that allows you to um, either deal an extra D12 of psychic damage when you hit, or uh, make them attack somebody else, and you can only do it like three times, proficient times per day or something. Yeah. Um, so you have to use your bad natural weapons to use your bad 10th level feature. Uh, and its capstone is a slight minor party buff that you can do once per day. Yeah, that's not great. That gives like, yeah. So here's my problem to play the beast subclass optimally. Well, what you do is you play it like any other barbarian. You take great weapon master, you take pole arm master. And you attack with a weapon. Then you grow a tail and <laughs> as a reaction can add a D8 to your AC against one attack over the course of the round. Okay. That's your whole subclass. Um, a D8 reaction to add to your AC. That's it. In my, You can... Now, granted, I've had a player play this... play a Beast Barbarian in my game, all the way up to level 15. He tried his best to make the most out of the claws, which are the best of the three weapons, if you're actually using them to attack. Right. He, despite that, despite me giving him magic items that specifically synergized with the claws, mm -hmm. despite me giving him a non-attunement item that automatically added a D6 fire damage to every one of his claw attacks still did the least damage in a party with a fighter, a ranger, and a monk. Wow. That's rough. The monk out-damaged him. Yeah, so if a monk is out-damaging a barbarian, I'm sorry. I yeah. can't. It, it goes in F tier. I'm sorry. Uh, I know people like this, and the flavor of the beast is really good. You get to play yeah, like a werewolf cool. kind of thing. It's really cool. I wish it was so much better. Yeah, Please. Right. They just didn't deliver. Yeah, I will say, uh, if you want to play a werewolf-style character, um, Matthew Mercer's Bloodhunter class, which is not official, but it is on D&D Beyond, so it's as close to official as you can possibly be, um, has a uh, subclass that allows you to play as a werewolf. And it's better than this. So, there you go. All right. Uh, now, <laughs> my favorite, the Berserker. Also goes in F tier. 
Yeah. Yes. I'm not going to try and argue for it. Um, uh, I just had a conversation about the Berserker uh, in your comments today on one of your monk subclass videos where I defended it slightly, only in as much to say that it was better than the Sun Soul Monk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So, I, I responded to that. I... Oh, yeah. I'm... So glowing reviews, I know. We're really. Really, really blowing the doors off with this one. So what does the Berserker do that's so bad? Well, it actively hurts your character, for one. There you go. Using your feature gives you levels of exhaustion. And uh, yeah. that's yeah. I, th that's why I, I still question your logic when you say the Sun Soul Monk is worse. That's fair. That's fair. Or my... the Beast is anywhere near as bad. <laughs> Well, my thing is, if you're playing into the Beast subclass, you're also making yourself worse. Just in a different not, way. Not that worse, though. Fair enough. Fair enough. Berserker definitely in my, uh, deserves its opinion on the bottom of F tier. <laughs> so, what does Frenzy do? It's your third level feature. It gives you a bonus action attack. That's cool! You get a yeah. level of exhaustion after your rage ends. That's not cool. You can't use that bonus action attack on the same turn that you rage. That's not cool. Like, there's so much working against the subclass. Yeah. Mindless rage. Is, mindless rage is a genuinely good feature. It gives you immunity to charm and frighten effects while you're raging. And if you're under the effect of one of those, you can go into a rage and nullify them. That's genuinely a good feature that I think should actually be baked into the base barbarian. I feel like all barbarians should have that feature. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the only good thing it gets, though. And two condition immunities. Not where you want to be, right? No, unless one of them uh, is intimidating. Exhaustion. Yeah, yeah, if only. <laughs> Imagine if that was his 14th level feature. You have immunity to the exhausted condition. <laughs> that would honestly probably be, be be better than retaliation. Anyway. Oh, yeah, you could use your features. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, you unlock your third level feature at level 14. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, why does that actually sound like a buff? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Uh, also, intimidating presence is terrible. It triggers off your charisma, and barbarians suck at charisma. So, generally. So, no. Yeah, generally speaking. You have to Unless really sacrifice your AC and. You're optimizing your, your ber berserker to the fullest. Yeah, no, you can't do it. Not with <laughs> not with point by at least. Not with like point by or standard array or anything like that. If you roll crazy stats, sure, go wild. But if I roll crazy stats, I'm not playing a berserker. <laughs> Let's, I'm gonna take advantage of those. All right, uh, I guess we'll move on. Though so, talking about the berserker was fun. Uh, next yes, up was. on the list is giant. Uh, this, giant this might be is... my unironic favorite. I genuinely it's my favorite like as well. Is it? Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I wrote my article for you, uh, I wrote it kind of right after the giant came out. So I hadn't fully formed my opinion on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I ranked it at number two in my um, ranking article. I've changed my mind on that. I think it's number one, actually. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, I think giant has it definitely usurps Ancestral Guardian um, because you can play it straight and it's actually good. You don't have yeah. to play a gimmick to make it good. And it's fun. I, I like throwing people around. It's very fun. You can play it straight levels 1 to 20. You get good features at every level. Can I say that about any other Barbarian subclass? I, no, I mean, there's some you don't get good features at any level. Exactly. Uh, right from 3, I know Sam has problems with only getting to grow large at level 3, but there's actually a lot of benefits for growing large. Anyway, I won't get into that. If you want to know all of that, I have a whole build about growing large and some of the benefits of it and grappling and things like that. Also, we'll uh, do a... you you have a uh, giant barbarian build. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which which we did. <laughs> I say you can play this subclass straight and it's fine. That build does not, not play this straight, subclass no. at all. That's playing it very um, silly. Very silly. Uh, but you don't have to play it silly. You can play it straight. And it adds more damage than any other subclass, which is a big, that's a big win. Um, it adds elemental damage, so you might occasionally be able to exploit some weaknesses. That's cool. 
You get to use thrown weapons, so that means you have a ranged option that's actually good. Mm -hmm. uh, which is not something that really any other barbarian can say. Uh, again, unless you're doing gimmicks. Uh, it can, like you said, it can throw people, which is so cool. Well, not just cool, but I mean, if if you've got a cooperative party with uh, some area of effect spells going down, then uh, yeah, that can be very effective because it's not just you know yeah. like other other things are a, a five foot shove. No, this is how far can you throw? Like thirty feet or something? Thirty feet. That's ridiculous. It is. Yes. Um, not only can you throw them thirty feet. You can use this bonus action at the start of your turn. It's a bonus action to throw them, by the way, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And you can do it every turn. There's no limit on it. Anyway, what I was saying, you can just throw your enemy straight up 30 feet. Yeah. They fall prone, take 3d6 damage, and you have advantage in all your attacks. <laughs> that's a, like, that's a even fun if, play pattern, yes. Yeah, even if you don't have area of effects to throw them into, you can still use this, and it's still great. Yeah. It's amazing with teamwork, and it's still good without teamwork. So yeah, it's it easily gets all the way up to B tier. Well, now, why does it? Why does it only get to B tier instead of A or S tier? Uh, it's still a barbarian. Well, it's still a barbarian. The base class is dragging it down. It could get more at level three. Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't think that this subclass really starts to take off until level six. Um, so if you're only going to like level five or something. Maybe you, you want a different barbarian, but if you play, if you want to play a barbarian straight from level one to twenty, giant all the way, definitely, hundred percent. Yeah, can't argue with you there. Yeah. So my new favorite, and probably the last subclass that's going to be printed into five E. So they ended on a banger. All right. Know. All right. Next up is Storm Herald. Uh, awful. Um, top <laughs> of F tier probably. Top of F tier? You're not putting this on a D? All right. No, uh, let me explain why. Okay. So the Storm Herald Barbarian, you get a aura, which you can only change. You have three options. You can only change between options when you level up. So it's not flexible at all. Yeah. And let's go over the auras. So you have a fire aura. And I'm just going to talk about the level three f features yeah. because beyond that, they're not very good. The fire aura. You get to deal your proficiency bonus damage to enemies that are within 10 feet of you, I think. So that's a whopping two. Uh, also, it doesn't exclude uh, friendly fire. Yeah. Um, the storm, you get to shoot a bolt of lightning out of your chest. Cool! It does a d6 damage and none on a successful dexterity save. Yeah. Uh, the Tundra, you get temporary hit points. Hey, that's just like the, the Battle Rager, right? That's got to be good. You get your proficiency bonus, temporary hit points. So, two. Yeah. yeah. All right. These, I, you, know, you said you're only going to talk about level three because the, the upper level stuff isn't good. But, I, I mean, is the upper level stuff not better than what you just said? Yeah, okay. So, it does build upon itself. I shouldn't say you don't get anything. I mean, like, However, that's where you get like, some utility stuff, isn't it? Or am I thinking of yeah, something so... different? Okay. No, you're right. So level six, you get resistance to the damage associated with your current aura. Right. So if you got the fire, then you uh, resist fire damage. Um, if you got the uh, storm, you resist lightning damage. And if you yeah. got the tundra, you resist cold damage. Um, yeah, and again, pretty niche. Yeah, and you can't. You have. You can only swap it between level. Right. So you can't say, "Oh, I'm going into the elemental plane of fire. Let me turn on fire resistance." No, you have to wait until you level up, which is stupid. You should be able to change it every time you rage. Um, and or then you should just have that, better stuff and commit to it. Yeah. Uh, past that, um, allies get buffs while they're in your aura, which I think is really dumb because, like I said, the fire aura doesn't have doesn't exclude friendlies. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you you are able to give out fire resistance to your friends while they're in the aura. But they're still taking fire damage from you. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not, not as have. much. It's ha yeah, but it's still stupid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Like, it's yeah, it's it's baffling to me the fact that these auras don't exclude friendly fire. 
which can make this subclass really tough to actually play with other people. Um, I mean, I guess you just avoid the fire one forever, but the fire one's probably actually the best one. Oh, and also this aura doesn't automatically happen. You have to use your bonus action every turn to activate it. Oh. So that means no polearm master, bonus attacks, nothing like that. All right. Yeah, you've convinced me. Um, well, I was arguing for a D, but uh, we'll stick with F. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm I'm able to be argued up and down. Just don't think that you yeah. can't, but no, that's not, not on this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, uh, Totem Warrior. Now, this, uh, you don't care much for this one, do you? This is a pretty famous one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I I say it is the third best. Okay. All right. Then it's not it's not too bad then. I, uh, yeah. yeah. So I, this one seems like one of the most genuinely powerful. Well, it's genuinely powerful for one reason exactly, and I think you know what I'm talking about. The bear. Yeah, resistance to all damage except for psychic while you're raging. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, it is good. You're right. The problem with the Totem Warrior is that that's really all you get. Um, yeah. The sixth level feature has a couple of niche utility things that you can do. I mean, like the Eagle allowing you to see a football field away, precise details. Really cool. How often have you needed to do that in the D game? No. Probably never. So, yeah, it's cool, but the bear just doubles your carrying capacity. Like it, the third level bear feature is really all you're getting. Now, I also like the wolf feature. It essentially gives all of your friends pack tactics, meaning they get advantage on their attack rolls if you're within five feet of the uh, target of their attacks. Yeah, I actually cool. really like that feature. Yeah. It's overshadowed a lot by bear. I mm -hmm. think they're both. One is obviously more offensively geared. And only good in certain parties where you have a lot of melee attackers. The other is just generically good defensively. So yeah. it, it'll vary which one is better. But Bear is genuinely really nice to have. And you'll really appreciate it when you have it. And when it's activating and when you're getting resistance to all these damage types. That being said, there's nothing in the game that is forcing enemies to attack you. And yeah not intelligent enemies might just keep wailing on you, but you start fighting smarter enemies as the game progresses, and they will learn to stop hitting the barbarian and to go hit the rest of your friends. Yeah, well, that's, that's... that's kind of why I rank the Ancestral Guardian over this. The Ancestral Guardian gives you insurance for that scenario. The Totem Warrior does not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is What are you threatening by standing... You know, right up in front of, uh, say, the dire wolf. Oh no, you're going to hit it with an opportunity attack as it runs by to chomp your wizard. I mean, that's that's not scary. A... Is it really? I mean, max we're talking twenty damage if you hit, right? <laughs> That'll. In... Oh no, you're just a dire wolf. Never mind. Yeah. Right. So, like, uh, you're you're right. That will kill some things, but like. <laughs> We're targeting, but we're getting into like fifth level, seventh level play. And an attack of opportunity is no longer threatening. And yeah, you can have Sentinel and things like that, but you know, I mean, any of these guys can get Sentinel. So I'm yeah, not really. That's true. Not really weighing that. So, but it's still good. I, I don't want to talk it down too much. I think it still probably goes right alongside Ancestral Guardian. Okay, in, good. That's what I was thinking. In, yeah, I, I think it's probably pretty close. That sounds good to me. Uh, moving on to Wild Magic. Uh, this subclass pains me. Yeah. Because it promises, it promises Wild Magic, and it does not deliver in the slightest. They, all they I think all they needed was some like upper tier different tables. Yeah, okay, so... Let me, there's an example of this that I actually really like. It's the College of Spirits Bard. Mm -hmm. So it has a table that starts out... Um, it, it, it has a table that you roll on using your Bardic Inspiration die. Your Bardic Inspiration die starts out as a D6. It eventually becomes a D12. Well, it's a D12 table. You, just, mm -hmm. you start with just the first six, though. And you unlock more as your Bardic Inspiration die. Oh, well, there you go. That could work, too. 
that's really cool. Yeah. I'd have loved to have seen a scaling table or just a bigger table. Mm-hmm. Eight options. And what, like you're going two to of see them are worth it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. You're going, but not just that. You're going to see like all of these within two, maybe three sessions of play. Yeah. And they don't scale. So they get really bad past, I'd say, seventh level. Um, I mean, we're talking about single dice of damage on these. Yeah. And they're eating your bonus action. And, and you know, your, your features, your high level features are the kind of the standard for wild magic. You get to roll on the table twice and pick one. But again, it's just a D8 table. Like, and I, also, and this is technically a good thing about the subclass, but I still hate it. Everything on the table is beneficial. Yeah, that's not that's, that's not wild. That's not wild magic. I'm sorry. It's not. Give me... Listen. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything was an amazing book in 99% of ways. This is the 1%. <laughs> Give me a full D one hundred table. Go hog yeah, wild seriously. with it. That that would have been go- that would have been cool. Like, uh, I'm sorry. People have come up with homebrew solutions to make this subclass better. I highly recommend that if you want to play a wild magic barbarian, if that concept is fun to you, and it's very fun to me, then look up those homebrew solutions because this ain't it. Uh, I think. Granted, it does get some good features. You also get the ability to become a literal spell battery for the actual good characters in your party. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, and so that does actually give it some utility, assuming you have full spellcasters in your party, which yeah. most people do. So it's not F tier. It's D tier. But it's... That sounds fair. I I I want to put it in F tier, but it objectively is D tier. It upsets me personally. Okay, I feel attacked. Yeah, yeah. Wild Magic Barbarian should have been a lot cooler than it is. Yeah, wasted opportunity. Okay, and the last Barbarian subclass on the list: the Zealot. Yeah, so the Zealot, uh, interesting flavor. You get a bit of, you know, I don't know. I don't really want to say holy because it doesn't necessarily have to be holy. You could be divided think, like a I think Zealot is the right word. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, it's a good subclass, I'll say. Um, the most that you're getting out of it is a once per turn extra damage feature uh, that deals, I think, an extra D6 plus half your barbarian level. Uh, whenever you hit, you get to use that once per turn. And that's a pretty good damage bump. Yeah. Um, it's not as good as what the Giant offers, um, but you do get it earlier. The Giant gives you its damage bump at level 6. The Zealot gives its damage bump at level 3. So there's that. And it um, kind of scales. Yeah, scales slowly, but it does yeah. technically scale. Um, aside from that, you get the ability to be brought back to life more easily. That's which uh, we're that we're, feels like a we're low. Feature. Yeah, we're low on features that only trigger when you drop to zero hit points. There's a lot of those in the game, and well, you agree with that, me that we're it's just a co- pretty, like it, it negates a cost burden. It's not like yeah, you still die. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. We're low on those. Imagine how low we are on this. Yeah. So, and and to be clear also nobody in your party can actually revive you at level three um clerics get revivify at level five so this is i mean unless you're going to a priest to get your healing anyway and and like they're still gonna charge you yeah yeah they're they're not gonna be like oh oh this guy i didn't have to expend my diamond i guess i won't charge you (laughs) like you might get a discount i don't know (laughs) maybe I want my third level feature to be a discount whenever I have to go get revived. <laughs> well, sorry, that's what I'd it rather is. just. I'd rather just not die. Yeah. Um, aside from that, uh, level six and level ten, um, 
well, at level six, you get the ability to add, I think it's a D6 to your saving throws, which is good. Um, you don't get to use it very often. Um, you get to use it once per every time you rage. So basically once per combat. Mm-hmm. Um, which is nice. And you'll definitely use it. And it'll definitely make a difference sometimes. But that's all you get at level six. Uh, level 10 gives you genuinely, I think, an actual pretty good feature in Zealous Presence. Uh, basically, you yell as a bonus action, and all of your friends have advantage on everything for the next round. That's pretty um, cool. Attack rolls, saving throws, the whole nine yards. I think it might be just attack rolls and saving throws, but anyway, that's mostly <laughs> what you're going to be doing in combat. Um, which is, it, that's genuinely really good. Obviously, it's better in a party with more people that are making attack rolls as opposed to full casters. Mm-hmm. Um, also really great with summons. If you got a druid in your party that's conjuring eight animals, um, giving them all advantage on their attack is pretty cool, right? Yeah. You can only do it once per uh, rest, be it long or short. So again, we have a feature that's very limited in the amount, in the amount of times you can use it. But in the time that you tur- a time or two that you use it each day, you'll feel the impact of it. It'll be pretty that's, good. That's still so much more than we've been getting out of some of these. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the capstone feature, in my opinion, is the most overblown and overrated capstone feature in the entire game. I don't remember what it is. Uh, it keeps you from dying as long as you're raging. So essentially, if you drop to zero hit points, you can continue to keep fighting as normal, even if you fail all three death saving throws. Now, if your rage ends while you have three failed death saving throws, you die instantly. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, of course, just take a healing potion right before your rage ends and come back up to some amount of hit points. You won't die. So that sounds really cool, right? Literally, yeah, you're you, a man so angry he can't die. <laughs> Except for the fact that it's really easy to make you not angry anymore. Uh, rage drops if you can't uh, attack anything on your turn, or mm-hmm. if you aren't atta- uh, or if you aren't attacked, mm-hmm. or if you become incapacitated. Um, so there's a lot of ways monsters can make you drop your rage. One, just by running away from you. Yeah, well, which anything can do. Yeah, but you're um, a barbarian. You're you're fast. Yeah, you are. So I'll give you that. Uh, any charm spell, you're dead. Uh, yeah, any I mean, old like, person spell, anything that right, right. keeps you in place, anything that restrains you, anything that paralyzes you or stuns you. Um, point being, it doesn't take much. Yeah, I guess you know, when you when you throw all those out there, I guess a lot of monsters. Well, I, I was gonna I was gonna argue. I mean. You're not fighting spellcasters every time, but um, yeah, there's there's a bunch of creatures that can do a lot of these things too. You're also getting this feature at level 14, and I can argue that you are fighting spellcasters a lot of the time at that level. Yeah. So, um, that being said, I'm not going to let a dud capstone, in my opinion, a dud. I know the entire internet disagrees with me on that, and I will fight this war in the comments, I'm sure. Um, but I'm not going to let uh, downer capstone keep me from recognizing that this is probably the bottom of C tier um, for this ranking. Uh, I rank it as probably the fourth best subclass. Well, um, that fits with this uh, chart here. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it gives you a meaningful damage increase. Uh, it's level six and level 10 features aren't amazing in that they don't have many uses, but the times you do get to use them, you'll appreciate them. And yeah, so I think it's fine. But if you want damage from your subclass and you know you're playing at least to level six, Giant does a better job at that. If you want defense, both Bear and both uh, Bear Totem and Ancestral Guardian do a better job at that. So it's yeah. And if you want support, Ancestral Guardian is also better than that at that. The if few you want support options tail. you get here. Yes, if you want a tail, there's a myriad of races I could tell you to play. Um, but anyway, that's uh, beside the point. 
So yeah, I, I think the Zealot is perfectly average. It's also, I will say, a very good subclass if you are not wanting to delve into any complexity at all. It is very simple and straightforward. All of your features do exactly what they say they do, and it's just it's it's, it's a very simple subclass. So if that's what you want, then hey, there you go. Yep. A barbarian on the whole is pretty simple. It is. None of these are too complex. Mm-hmm. Well, barbarian right, well, is d- have... often. Yeah, yeah. Barbarian is often seen as a good class for new players, and I don't entirely disagree with that. But I also say that you should give new players something interesting to do. So yeah. maybe tell them to play giant. That's that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that uh, that covers our our rankings for barbarian. Uh, stay tuned for more of these. Uh, now that I know how to use the tech better. Um. Thank you. Cameron for being on here and thank you everyone for joining us. Let us know what you think down in the comments. Uh give give Cameron some some hell for his views on Zealot's capstone. Uh yeah, yeah whatever, I'm sure I'll hear all, I'll hear all about my beast bar, beast barbarian ranking as well. That so. too, yeah. Look look well, looking forward well, to let that. us have it. All right. Uh also don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.